So there are a lot of really large print farms out there with hundreds, if not sometimes thousands of machines. But most of them you may have noticed only really make about one item. For example, Prusa itself uses their print farm to make parts for their 3D printers. But they really only have a limited number of SKUs in there, maybe a hundred parts, but really actually only a few dozen that they're actually producing for any given machine. Then you might look at Gantry, and while Gantry has still fewer than 100 SKUs with a lot of different parts inside of there, it's still pretty well contained. And then you could look at Outa Darts, which actually probably has the most individual parts with that, with all the SKUs and individual components and add-ons that they make for Nerf guns. Now, what is the reason for this though? 3D printers can make any part at all. Why do so many of these companies only make a couple of parts? And that's what we're gonna talk about inside of this video. So the reason for this focus has a number of different factors involved with it, both manufacturing, economic, and just business model in general. A lot of these farms are for individual companies to make the product for that company. If Prusa decided, oh, we make 3D printers with our print farm, but then they just opened it up for everybody else, well, then they would stop being a 3D printer manufacturer and they would start being a service provider, which would change the dynamics of how their company is set up to operate. It's very important for younger and smaller companies to be focused on the core product that they're working on and grow that without chasing shiny things that they might not actually need. However, there's another factor in it as well, which is actually technical. 3D printers can theoretically make any part at all, but if you start introducing any part at all, like a service provider, like what we do here at Slant3D, you will have one client one day who comes in and says, we want a carbon fiber part that has to work inside of an airplane and has to be aerospace grade. And then the next day, somebody will say, I want wood-filled succulent pots. Making those two separate parts is very difficult, and you can't generally just swap material and have the same machine start making the other material. In a mass production context, this is very cumbersome. So you either have machines committed to that particular set of products and that particular set of materials and that particular set of settings, and then those other machines over here that work with other materials, settings, and properties. So in order to maintain an efficient process, you have to have many machines for each category. But even more than that is the actual geometry of the parts themselves. If you start out with a very simple part that just has a circular first layer, that's really easy to print. But then if you have to then use that same machine to print something else that's like a star pattern or something odd that's just out of the blue, it's very difficult to just swap and do that because the bed may have collected some dust or there's smudges where they wouldn't be or maybe the bed has gone out of alignment or maybe the printer's gone out of tune from making a part where that was allowable but now it has to make a part with much higher standards. Basically, all of the variability inside of 3D print farms makes it difficult to handle large variations of parts. So most print farms are not used to make any part at all. They're used to make a discrete set of pieces because in order to build an efficient manufacturing process, you want as little variation as possible. So this is really why most print farms only make a few different types of parts or different skews of the same part that are still fairly similar so that you have the same material, same color, as little switch over as possible because you're able to build a much more efficient system which will widen your margins, allow you to operate more cleanly and it's just easier to set up. This is the other challenge with service providers in general too. We have to deal with not just a couple hundred skews but literally infinity, whatever somebody brings through the door. And this can be really challenging because each time a new product or mass production run comes through, we gotta make 10,000 parts of whatever it may be, we have to build a whole new process around those set of parts to make sure they're being produced reliably and consistently. So 3D print farms are actually very efficient for mass production if you're making a few basic parts. But if you have to operate and make any part at all, it gets much more cumbersome. Here at Slant3D, the way we manage this is by number one, limiting the number of options that are available to our customers. There are some things that we just will not do because they're not within our wheelhouse and within our existing processes. And then we have worked really hard over the last few years to standardize the non-standardization so that when a part comes through, everybody involved with that piece knows what is good, what is quality, how is that defined, and how can we get that measured in as many ways as possible. So hopefully this gives you a little bit of insight as to why so many of the really large print farms out there really don't make very many different types of parts and why so many service bureaus don't really have very many machines very often. It is an exceptionally difficult problem to produce large numbers of parts when they are changing all the time. Have a great day, everybody.